So, so it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, who is Professor or Associate Professor Michael Rendell from the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Um, Michael is normally a um, demo pupper person, but without going too much away in his talk, he's going to present a new tool which will hopefully become indispensable for hair researchers in the future. Thanks, Claire. It's cut off at the bottom. Uh, I have no uh, conflicts of interest to disclose. Um, I'm truly excited uh, for participating, about this, participating in this uh, fantastic congress that brings together us basic uh, hair researchers and hair clinicians, and we have the opportunity to cross-feed from each other. This is really great. Um, I also thank the organizers for the opportunity to present some of our um, recent and ongoing work where in our lab it, uh, we aim to figure out um, uh, how specialized dermal cells and the embryonic uh, precursors in dermal condensates communicate with stem cells and progenitors that controls uh, hair follicle formation, growth, and regeneration. And so in, in my lab, we don't look at uh, thousands of movies, but we try to make sense of thousands of genes. And I'll, I'll tell you today about uh, the systems level approaches that we take to uh, tease out genes that may be uh, down the road, uh, we are coming down the road, uh, that may play an important role during all this. Uh, uh, processes that we're interested in. So these are the three uh, major key phases uh, where we believe that uh, the papilla cells communicate with uh, progenitors to regulate hair growth, proliferation, differentiation, and uh, migration and differentiation of uh, transit amplifying progenitors uh, during the growing, in the growing hair follicle. And as we heard from Pantelis, that the DP is very essential during uh, hair regeneration. We're very interested in figuring out what these signals are. Likewise, during earliest embryonic hair follicle formation, after the induction, we still do not know the signals that control um, um, uh, proliferation of the signals from the dermal condensates that control proliferation uh, of placard cells that leads to hair formation. So it's very interesting to, to ask the question, what are all these key signals from the DC and from the DP? And then also take a step back and ask, what are the controls uh, that, uh, that control uh, uh, this specialized fade in the first place. And so we think uh, as basic researchers that this is a very fascinating stem cell niche model, but in fact it also has very practical implications for developing hair regenerative therapies because if we would understand these inductive signals and uh, would be able to uh, grow and expand competent hair inducing cells, which to this day we're still not able to, uh, to do with both in mouse and in human, then we would be possibly able to uh, induce new hair growth uh, to, uh, in, in patients and also uh, perform better skin uh, transplants uh, in, uh, where we also can grow hair follicles. And so once we would be able to do this, we could possibly open shop sometime, like this uh, hair center here in Harlem, close to where I live in New York City, and so this seems to be permanently closed. Um, so what are the essential new signals? How can we tease this out systematically at a, at a global level? This is uh, the question that we are, that we ask in the systems that we have set up over the last few years, and now it's time to harvest. So um, we, we isolated high resolution the DP niche cells, but at the same time also the stem cells and progenitors, and define molecular signatures of genes that are highly enriched in each of the cell types, with the hope to uncover genes that play a role in, in uh, doing these processes in, 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 will be uncovered in future uh, genetic tests. And so to uncover these genes, we use uh, high resolution uh, uh, um, um, sequencing technology, next generation RNA deep sequencing, to interrogate with high sensitivity uh, 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 transcript combined with gene expression. And I'll show you here the work from uh, Rachel Sennett, a, a very talented MD PhD student in, in, in the lab who graduated recently and published uh, this paper, uh, a resource article in, in developmental cell about two months ago, where we share all this uh, uh, transcript combined data. So, she has set up a system to tease out the earliest dermal condensates from the mouse at E14.5, also all the neighboring fibroblasts. In addition, of course, the plaque of progenitors and for comparisons also the epidermal cells. And because we could and we realized that we can get these cells as well, we isolated Schwann cells and also the earliest migrating melanocytes as they come into the epidermis. And so she has set this up by uh, uh, generating a multicolor labeling strategy where we cross SOX to GFP mice uh, with left on RFP mice 
where the where green fluorescent protein is expressed under the SOX2 promoter and red fluorescent protein is expressed under the LES1 promoter, the mouse that, uh, um, uh, the reporter mouse that uh, Pantelis talked about earlier as well. So in embryonic scheme, RFP is expressed widespread throughout the dermis in fibroblasts, as well, of course, in dermal condensates. GFP itself is expressed in the, at highest levels in dermal condensates. During these studies, we also learned that melanocytes express RFP as well within the epidermal compartment. So to isolate at the same time also all the epithelial cells, uh, uh, including the placard progenitors separately from uh, the other epidermal cells, we used two cell surface uh, markers, e here and p here. So in this multicolor labeling strategy, we then uh, isolated the primary uh, the cells from to enzymatic digestion and uh, performed fax isolations, where you can see here these nested uh, uh, graphs of uh, the different uh, fax uh, gates where we, we plot the individual colors. So when we come from uh, the lice gate, which is the anti-embryonic skin, we can separate out uh, all the epithelial cells with e here and shift over the placard progenitors. We can set then separate uh, from the uh, non placard epithelial cells the melanocytes with RFP. From all the remaining dermal gate, we can, with GFP and RFP, these are the dermal condensates, the fibroblasts, and as we learned later in our follow up studies, the Schwann cells, a mixture of dermal condensates and Schwann cells, and all the remaining other cells, which includes uh, smooth muscle cells, immune cells, endothelial cells, and possibly any uncovered cell type. An important point I want to make is that having a representation of the anti-embryonic skin, because when we look, and, uh, when we come from the life gate, you can see that we actually account for all the cells that come from this life gate. So this comes in very handy because when we then look at marker genes, we can have really uh, sort of perfect control. Because when we look, for instance, uh, at DKK4 that has been previously described by Angela Cristiano's lab to be expressed in the in the placard progenitors can see this tremendous enrichment and no contamination in the other cell types. The same is true when we do this for several other markers, for instance, over like one in the epidermal cells, ECT in melanocytes, collagen in fibroblasts, GFRA1 in Schwann cells, and Tbexetin, a gene that we have uh, uh, uncovered and used also for targeting early dermal condensates, highly expressed in dermal condensates. And this is the population where we know there's a mixture. So then we had high confidence in these isolations and uh, performed the next generation RNA deep sequencing. This was a collaboration with a postdoc in the lab, RMB Reza. And so in this one sentence, uh, uh, there's one year of work really to figure out how to use low amounts of RNA that comes from a few hundred cells to amplify cDNA and really generate uh, genome-wide coverage with up to 40, 50 million reads from this RNA deep sequencing. And I do not have time to show all this quality controls. But this is essential to really uncover all the genes that are expressed. And then we collaborated with Avi Mayan at Mount Sinai, uh, um, a bioinformaticist and uh, his grad student, to perform a whole host of uh, uh, um, uh, genome wide analysis. And I'll just show you here hierarchical clustering. Uh, in this heat map, you can see genes in each, in each of these cell types. The further statistical tests, and we could then, these are signatures that are highly enriched in each of the cell types. Now we know about a few hundred genes within the dermal condensates separately from the fibroblasts. On the, other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, we have knowledge now of genes within the placard progenitors separately from the epidermal cells. The same is true from the neurocrest derived melanocytes and trans cells. But then, we, as the next step, we wanted to know well, are all the, all the known genes really expressed in our signatures and present in our signatures? And that is indeed the case. So this list is just a short who is who with uh, genes in. Uh, in placard progenitors, BMP2, DKK4, FGF20, Sonic Hedgehog, Lincoln B, just to name a few, that have uh, been discovered by uh, many people in the audience. And then we have also, of course, many thermal condensate genes that uh, we and others have described recently. The real meat of the study lies now in the fact that we have many new signature genes, including signaling molecules and transcription factors, both in the placard progenitors and in the thermal condensates. Uh, we now share all these genes, and this is really a, a whole uh, um, a future uh, strength to study these genes and figure out uh, additional controls and the real controls in, in careful different And so I should just show you here with this uh, qPCR uh, the validity of all our isolations and uh, RNA-seq uh, uh, genome-wide uh, discoveries that virtually all the genes that we test would be really verified. 
It's been performed a, uh, a, a variety of different uh, uh, transcriptome wide analyses within, uh, uh, within the signatures to figure out what the signatures stand for. And I don't have time to show you all this, but I just show you here this gene ontology analysis where we find uh, categories uh, enriched in, in the signatures like wind signaling that we previously knew about or hair follicle development. The domocondensates, we have many genes that are involved in regulation of cell migration, regulation of cell cell adhesion, and axon guidance. And so we came up with a provocative hypothesis that these repellent forces and attractive forces that play a role in brain development could play a role in, um, in uh, cell sorting between fibroblasts and domocondensate formation. And all these details are in the paper. But the last important point I want to make with, with all of these isolations and all this uh, large-scale effort is that we share all this data in an easily accessible platform that is called HairGel, short for Hair Gene Expression a Library. And uh, we also make this really easy to look at. It even works on the mobile platform. So you can literally take out your phone right now and look up uh, a gene, for instance, SOX2, and see that it's a thermocomacy. So I think with this, we really have uh, solved this now nicely to really share all, the, discover all the genes, share these genes for future uh, studies so with the entire community. And this is all available on the website and in the paper. And the next slide. Okay. So in the last um, three slides, I simply show you what's coming next. So this is sort of a sneak preview um, of what we have now uh, accomplished with uh, for the hair growth phase, where the, the, the scale is even much larger because we use here six different fluorescent reporter mice in collaboration with Ray Yi from the University of Colorado in four different pairs to isolate 14 distinct cell populations from the uh, during the morphogenetic hair growth phase of the birth. And so in this, I cannot show you the details, but in this way we can isolate now ETs from the different hair follicle types that we heard about yesterday from Bruce Morgan, where we can now tease, try to tease apart the genes that are expressed in each of these ETs with the hope to find controls um, in, uh, that regulate uh, different hair types. We have now also isolations of the anti We can subdivide for the first time the hair follicle stem cell uh, precursors of the future adult uh, stem cells. We subdivide the matrix into the transit, fascinating transit amplifying cell compartment and gain some insights there. And so um, I will only show you one analysis that is quite uh, mind boggling to see how complex this really is going to be to tease this apart. As we, we collaborated with Peter Sandstra at uh, 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 University of Toronto, who used the system, uh, analysis system previously for the hematopoietic. Uh, uh, system uh, and, and, and signaling relationships, so we build an unbiased signaling interaction network by taking all the signature ligands, all the signature receptors that are here color coded, that are here color coded for each cell type. You see the CPP in the center, and the arrows point from ligand to the receiving cell that has a receptor. And so you can see this will possibly be too complex for any one lab to grasp, and so we have to come, come together as a community to test this further and really. Um, start some networking modeling to really figure out how, uh, how the complex interaction between all the different cell types uh, are functions. And so uh, we're doing this now also for uh, the uh, hair cycle, where um, we, uh, we combine all the technologies that have been used by different people at different times and isolate all the cells at the same time, where we can now for the first time isolate really pure EP cells at this stage and fibroblasts with similar methods that other people have used to isolate bulge and germ stem cells. But the key is here that we capture uh, with high resolution the entire uh, cycle from a single mouse during the first cycle. And so we can do this simply because we ride the wave. We know that, uh, that uh, uh, hair regeneration and new antigen occurs in a fashion from head to tail. So when we pick the right time point, we can uh, 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 take from the back skin four different songs, and then from these four songs, now with triple transgenics plus antibody stainings, isolate seven different populations. So now we have from a single mouse 28 populations in the hope to capture the entire hair cycle with high resolution. And so I can only tell you that we have now received just two weeks ago finally uh, four billion reads that we're now trying to map back to the transcript now and make sense, and we will. Uh, share this data as well in the future. And so I will summarize by, by saying that we're going after all these three key phases uh, with a global appro approach and 
Uh, I've shown you that uh, we now finished the analysis and shared this data for uh, as molecular signatures for the Dermocoinset niche and for the plaque progenitors and the anti-embryonic skin during hair follicle formation. And then we have identified many new signaling factors and transcriptional regulators. We shared this data and in the future also the data for growth and regeneration at this platform, hrgel.net. And I would only encourage everyone, if you find interesting genes and they will be useful for your own analysis and for your own papers, please cite the paper because this is important for the family. So I will close by uh, thanking, thanking again uh, the people involved. I mentioned Rachel already earlier, she's back in med school. Emily Reza, she's uh, doing this heroic effort during the postnatal stages. She's a postdoc in the lab. And I thank the collaborators, Avi Mayan, with the bio, for the bioinformatic analysis and several other people for sharing advice with us. And then, of course, the funding sources, without which we couldn't have done any of these very expensive experiments. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll take questions. I think we're going to have to hold the questions till the end, but I just have to say that, that uh, this is like a dream uh, 10 or 15 years ago, so congratulations. Yeah.